What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in this video, we're gonna talk about a few of the changes that happened in SketchUp 2026 that you might not have noticed, but that are gonna make a big difference in the way that you work in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so we've talked a lot in the past about how much I'm a fan of the ambient occlusion inside of SketchUp, right? It's really good for adding, um, adding highlights in areas to give depth to a scene, right? Basically what it does is it takes the crevices in a model and it highlights them so you get this like additional depth in here. It's super valuable for elevations and also for perspective views and for plan views. I use it all the time. But the problem is once you zoom out, on a model, right? So for this one, I've picked a non-textured style. And when I zoom out, notice how I don't see that ambient occlusion anymore. That's because the ambient occlusion is displayed based on a distance from the crevices. The further your camera gets away, the more you can't see the ambient occlusion. Well, in SketchUp 2026 in your styles, if you go to your face settings right here under ambient occlusion, you now have the option to add a distance multiplier. So the distance multiplier means that even when you get further away, you can use the distance multiplier to make sure that ambient occlusion is still going to show up in your scene. So you can still adjust the intensity in the base distance in here, but the multiplier means if you have something bigger, like a city, you can still utilize that ambient occlusion to get that look in your scenes. And something I'm going to play around with, I haven't quite figured out exactly how I'm going to use it yet, but you do now have the option to change the color as well. So that's interesting to me because you can highlight things in different ways and things like that. But um, the big big needle mover for me is the distance multiplier that you can now add to the ambient occlusion. Okay, the, so the second thing, and it's something I haven't seen anybody talk about yet, but it's a huge quality of life improvement. It was something that kind of disrupted my workflow inside of SketchUp 2025. So in SketchUp 2025, they rolled out the new materials um, inside of the materials browser, right? Remember, they now have the uh, PBR materials for the rendering function. Well, one of the weird things they did in version 2025 is notice how in 2025, there's no option to access your default material because a lot of the time what you want to do with materials right is you want to come in here and you want to remove a material that's applied to something well what had happened is for whatever reason that default material was no longer a button here it was something that was just in the in model section you had to go to in model and find default material in here in order to apply default material and it looks like we've got some uh, materials applied to a group here so i'll just override those but notice how you had to go into your in model section in order to find that well in sketchup 2026 they moved it back out. So what that means is that means that I can click into this model right here. And now if I want the default material, I can just click right here and I can find it without having to go into the in model section in order to find that. Like it is still in there if you liked going there to find it, but you can access it a lot quicker just by going to this button right here, clicking in the option for default. And while we're here, let's talk about the changes they made to the material preview. And so what happened is they changed the way you preview the materials right here, right? So you've got this little like swatch right here, but the only way you can see what the material is, is by looking at this little box. Well, the problem with this little box in version 2025 is you can't really see what the material is very well, right? It's actually kind of hard to figure out what a material is using this box right here. Well, in 2026, what they've done is they've given you the option to right click in here and you can set the thumbnail type back to flat. So now I can just open this up and I can just see this thumbnail in here so I can actually see what a material is. Now, two things I would still like to see added here. The first is I would like to see some kind of a scale slider so that I can make this bigger or smaller because it can still be difficult to tell kind of what something is using this thumbnail right here. Like I'm even finding myself looking for something that I can click and drag in order to make this bigger and there's just nothing there. Um, it is significantly better for previewing materials than this cube thumbnail right here, the flat is, but I'd still like to see a slider for that. The other thing is I would also like the option to toggle this. Like if I toggle that preview here, I'd also like it to toggle down below. So not only do I want to see the material here, it makes picking the materials from a big list a lot better because again, it's just really kind of hard, even if you bump these up to the extra large thumbnails to tell what something like this is. And these thumbnails, um, the flat thumbnail is a lot better. Okay. So next up, they solved a problem that's been really frustrating for a long time. Like if you've ever accidentally rotated out of a view and then accidentally updated a scene with that adjusted camera view, you know that's really frustrating because 
up until now, there was no option to undo that. Meaning now your elevation view, which used to be an elevation view, no longer is. And you would have to go back in and manually reset this and replace everything. And that could get really nasty if you were using something um, inside of layout with a set scene view. Luckily, now we have the option in here. If you go up to edit, notice how undo update scene is an option. So now if I undo this, notice how that scene goes back to what it was before. So if you accidentally update a scene and you didn't want to do that, now that shows up as an undo in here, which is going to save you a ton of time when it comes to redoing camera views because this was something that happened to me all the time. So very excited for that one. It seems small, but with the amount of time it saves, it's definitely a lot bigger. Okay, so another big one for me and really anyone that uses pre-made templates that have tags that don't have things associated with them is previously when you saved a model, right? So if I do a file save right here or a save as, notice how it's going to ask me now what I want to purge and use. Previously, the option was I could only purge everything or nothing. Well, the thing is, most of the time I don't want to purge my tags, especially if I have a template, because my template's probably going to have like architectural cabinets, architectural windows, architectural things like that. So if you pre-make those tags and there's nothing assigned to them and you start with a template, if you did a purge all previously, it would just get rid of all of those tags, which is really frustrating. But now we have the option in here to check what we're going to purge. So in this case, I don't have any unused components, materials, or environments, but I do have unused tags and styles. Well, in this case, I only want to purge the unused styles so that I don't have like a billion styles in here, right? If they're not associated with a view, I don't really want them, but I can uncheck the box to keep the extra tags in here and only purge the styles. So if I click on purge selection, it's going to purge just the styles or whatever I have selected, which if you use templates, that's a huge, huge deal. Okay, so next up is a function that's gonna get better over time as things are added with this functionality. And um, this is the ability to scale live components. And so remember, live components are basically things inside of the SketchUp 3D warehouse that have been built using this live functionality. And what that does is that gives you the ability to like update these as you go. So let's say for example, that we wanted to add in a um, double casement window. So we're gonna bring this window in right here. And we're gonna drop this into this space. Now remember with a live component, what that means is that means you have the ability to come in here and make adjustments depending on how they're set up, right? Depending on how they've been authored. So you can use this to adjust this live using these options right here. Well, the problem with this, the frustrating thing about it is when I drop this into my model, I don't want to have to type in the values. What I wanna do is I wanna be able to just size this to fit in my opening, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and flip this around. No, that was probably right the first time. So I wanna be able to size this to fit in my opening. Well, in this version, we now have the ability, if the components have been authored this way, there's now components that can be scaled, right? So I can scale this into the opening and it's going to adjust automatically. So the nice thing about this is live components are definitely more powerful than dynamic components. The downside to live components is they're also much more complicated to create. So unless you're really good with Trimble Creator, it's probably something that uh, you're going to have to wait for somebody else to build tools that can actually work um, for you. So like, for example, I'm going to move in here. See, like this is the issue right here is I'm having to scroll through here in order to try to find a door. So in this case, this residential interior door will probably work, even though I'm looking for an exterior door. But these live components have the ability you can drop them the gap right here and you can just scale them and they're going to resize but only for ones that have been built with this new functionality and most of the older live components aren't so this is something that's going to grow and get better over time um, it's definitely not going to be replacing dynamic components for me at the moment um, because i just have a much better library and i can kind of create those myself where trimble creator is something i just haven't really been able to quite sort out yet but Having the ability to scale these and put them in place definitely puts them more in the I could probably use these category versus the that's nice, but it doesn't fit in my workflow kind of category. So that's definitely a nice improvement. Okay, so this next one is probably one you didn't even notice and you might have even used it without noticing that you could use it. So in SketchUp 2025 and before, the way that the trays work, so if I go back to 2025, the only way that you could pop something up in your default tray was to go to window, default tray, and then check a box 
right? So that's the only way you could pop these up over here is to go to that option. Well, for a lot of users, especially if you're newer to SketchUp, but also just for users in general, that's a little bit clunky, right? All this stuff is over here and I got to go all the way over here to edit what's contained inside of this tray. That's a lot of extra work. So what you can do instead is over here on the right hand side in 2026, you can just right click in here and it pops up a little window that allows you to toggle these on and off, right? So I can right click in here. I can toggle my fog on. Um, I can toggle my fog off just by right clicking over here. So that doesn't seem like it would be a huge deal. And by the way, you have to do it in the gray boxes. You can't do it in the windows themselves. So in the actual title of the boxes, that doesn't seem like a big deal, but this is significantly more intuitive, right? Than having to come over here and do this. So the outliner is probably a good example. Like I find a lot of my default um, SketchUp installations that I open up don't have the outliner in here. Well, now I can just right click add the outliner and I can find it and we're good to go. So um, again, kind of a small quality of life thing, but something that a lot of people are going to use without even realizing it wasn't there before. So remember with the new collaboration mode, you have the option to add comments. You have to save a model to Trimble Connect before you do that. Okay. And so say I wanted to add some additional documentation or something like that, like, right? Like this is an older photo modeled model, but say I wanted to add some additional information to this model. Well, what I can do is I can add a comment right here. Well, when I add the comment, I have the ability to save a photo. And so say I wanted to document what's actually here. What I could do is I can click on the but plus button right here. I can go to add photo and we're just going to add the photo right here and I can send this. So I can just say photo of sculpture. And so what you can do is you can use a 3D model as kind of a placeholder for photos as well. So if you're trying to do documentation of space or something like that, you can click in here, you can add this and it's going to show you the area in the 3D space. And you can also pop up the photo that you have here and you can view that inside of your comments too. And so it gives you the ability to quickly add like documentation data and things like that to sites, um, which is something that I would use a lot. You obviously have the other collaboration functions as well, but this is the one to me, um, kind of as a general contractor who works with a lot of existing buildings. I'm like, yeah, I could definitely use that. Okay. And then the last one, um, we've talked about using Polycam in the past. It's an app for your iPhone that allows you to use the LiDAR scanner in order to scan different spaces. And then um, from those scans, you can create three-dimensional images. Well, not only can you generate the LiDAR data, but you can also export a point cloud. So this is something where uh, Scan Essentials added the ability inside of Trimble Scan Essentials to create a mesh from a point cloud, right? A surface mesh right here, which wasn't really interesting to me because I don't have laser scanning equipment. But then I realized that I could export that data from something like Polycam too. And so what that does is that gives me the ability because you can export a uh, PLY file out of Polycam and you can open that inside of SketchUp. So Scan Essentials will let you say this is an RWP file, but then you can click on open. We're gonna say yes to align with the SketchUp origin right here. And it's going to take a second to bring it in, but you can use that point cloud. And I'm going to say, yes, I want to create a link right here, but you can use that point cloud in order to create a surface. So what I can do is I can just draw a rectangle over top of this. I can move that rectangle up. And basically what I've done is I've created a 3D mesh. Well, now I'm going to tell it, okay, with the, this 3D mesh, I want you to create a surface using the point cloud. So I can take this, I can click on the option for surface mesh right here, and you can adjust the size of the mesh. And that's what's really cool about this is you can select from face and I can set if I want this to be like 24 inch cells in here. So if I do 24 inch cells, it's gonna create a very simple surface. But if I do something like six inch cells right here, it's gonna be a much more precise surface that's gonna be a much heavier mesh. You can see how you can use this though in order to actually generate 3D models from your point cloud files. And what I like about this is you could just bring the polycam file in, but this gives you a lot more control over what's created. And it's also kind of a quad grid in here, which is not something that polycam creates. It just gives you this kind of like really nasty mesh. So I do actually like this because I can get this data using my phone and bring it in and use it to create meshes inside of SketchUp itself, which is actually valuable to me because that's something that I might do. All right. So those are some of the like lesser known functions in SketchUp 2026 that I think will probably make a difference for you. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What are you using in the release? Could you see yourself using these? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.